All right, everyone. I have the fans replaced on the front. The fan that was on the front, there was a solitary fan. It was this one. It looks to be a nice fan. It looks like it's a high, you know, a static pressure type fan. Okay. It was set to pull air into the case. In other words, it's pulling air in, not pushing air in. Um, I replaced it with these. These are supposed to be quieter. I don't know if they will be or not because I haven't heard this one running, so I can't really compare. These do have LEDs on them. This does not. I'm going with a blue and white theme here. Um, there are two instead of one. Now, the other thing we came to talk about is... Here, let me drop the camera a little bit. I, I know you just keep seeing my fat old belly, but hey... Most likely, if you're watching this video, you want to see this case. You don't want to see me. Um, the other thing to talk about is cabling. Okay? Um, if you're building a computer for the first time, what, when I first built my computer, you just shoved the cables in the case and forgot about them. That isn't really done so much anymore, especially if you're building a performance computer. The cables obstruct airflow. So you work hard to get the cables out of airflow. Now, this case over here has 25 millimeters of clearance between the motherboard support and the side panel. That's about that much finger space right here for hiding cables with. It has cable ports all over it, has cable tie downs all over it. Um, some of these cable tie downs in here, these aren't cable tie downs, but it has uh, places to put zip ties between the cables and stuff. It has a couple of places like right here, where, uh, are we seeing it? Yes, down here at the bottom, where I can loop the cables through the metal of the case for the fans, and then once that's looped through there, I can push it and lock it down, and that's part of the metal case, okay? That will help keep these cables clear and free of the hard drive bay. And I really don't want any fan cables or anything running through that hard drive bay. My last case, I did have cables running under, at the bottom part of the hard drive bay. That's where I hid most of the cables. In this case, I won't have to do that. It's designed a lot better. All cables can go in here, through this, these two cutouts on the side here, and then you route them all back here. So the front side of the case should be really neat and clean where you really want your air flowing. And all the cables are out of the airflow. And that's what I'm working on. The last thing I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to go ahead and start working on the motherboard, and getting the motherboard installed and the CPU installed is that oh, that's a sticker good um, the side panel I took the fan off the top because I won't be using it up on the top of the case let's readjust the camera a little bit there we go that shows the whole case took the fan off the top of the case and I put it on the side panel here okay now my last case had metal pinout connectors on the back that were spring-loaded, so when you slid the case shut, the fan got power with them. This one doesn't have that, so I'm going to have this cable hanging off the end of the panel anytime I pull it off. General pr principles, that's not such a horrible thing. It's just kind of annoying to deal with. I routed the fan, co fan connector down across the top of this one fan to here. I'm going to zip tie it to this cooling fan in the back of the case, this one here, so that this connector just hangs right there. So when I open the case, I can disconnect it and it's right where the back panel of the case is. If you pull the case, pull it open, you can pull that out and just unplug it before you go any further. I'm going to leave enough length of cable on the fan on the door so that I can pull it out quite a ways before it comes off. But this keeps this cable out of view and neat. And that's what I'm after. Because I want this to be neat on the inside. I want air to flow beautifully on the inside. Okay, now I'm about to get to the screw connections for the motherboard. One thing I'm noticing, and some cases don't do this. Well, maybe they all do now. Again, it's been five, six years since I've really worked on a computer case. So things may have changed. But somehow I don't think some of the case manufacturers have caught up with everything. This one has all sorts of numbers listed by all the screw outs, okay? Now, right here is a motherboard hold index. 
We have ATX, Flux ATX, Mini ATX, Micro ATX, Mini ITX. Those are all different standards for motherboard sizes and screw mounting points. I've got an ATX motherboard. What I've had to do in the past is sit the motherboard down, figure out what holes I'm going to put the screws in, and then put the risers on that way. This motherboard, however, has everything labeled. They're all numbered. The ATX motherboard uses A1. It says A1, A9. Okay. When I look on here, there's an A8, an M7. This is U5, A5, uh, M4, F5, B2. So if I look, it has them all listed. I just look for A9s and put screws in the A9 holes. Okay. Or the A1 holes. I'll have to do, okay, that's it. It's just the A1 holes. So there you go. I know what holes the screws go in, and I don't have to guess. Now I'm going to put the screws in, check them, then tighten them down to make sure they're going in properly. Okay? So I'll come back once I get the risers in and checked. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I figured out what the A listing is. It's A1 through A9 for the ATX. It's B1 through B4 for the Mini ITX, okay? That's what the numbering was. So, in case you're curious, there's nine screws for an ATX motherboard. And they are numbered sequentially, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, with an A beside them. It took me a little while to figure that out, so I thought I'd share that with the video. Okay, I'm not gonna pick the case up because the motherboard is just sitting in there, but the case labeling was correct. Those are the proper plate locations for placing the screws for the motherboard. So I'm going to pull the motherboard out, put the processor in, and then I'm going to put it back together again. I mean, get it mounted up in there. There's a couple things you got to do before you put the motherboard in the case, however. One, I did the case fans. Two, some people put the power supply in, some don't. I'll probably put the power supply in first. I don't kind I kind of don't want to do that, but putting the power supply in because putting the power supply in makes the case heavier. Right now it's fairly light and easy to move around with that power supply in there. It's going to increase the weight by a good 5-10 pounds. So I didn't want to. But I think I should just to make sure I don't hurt the motherboard. Okay? Because this is a pretty motherboard, and I don't want it damaged, scratched, beat up, or anything. And speaking of that, we're going to talk about putting that CPU in there pretty soon, because that's coming up. So, let me pause. I will come back in a second. Okay, what I was talking about, i got to do this before I put the motherboard in. This is the uh, motherboard dust shield, or input-output shield. It goes in the back of the case. All cases have a spot for this. Wow, I'm not used to that. Most of these I've ever played with have been kind of hokey. This has some sort of backing on it. And it is really pretty and shiny and labeled really nicely. Okay? With this white case, it's going to look good in my opinion. Now, I'm trying to remember which way they go. If they go in, it apparently comes from the underside, from this side in. That, wouldn't, so that would not surprise me. Okay, let me go read up on how this goes in. I haven't put one in in a long time, but I'm pretty sure it goes from inside towards the out instead of outside in. It doesn't look like, yeah, it's got to go inside out just looking at it. So I'm going to get this installed, and I'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm working on installing the CPU now. Um... I got the motherboard in front of me. We got everything set up the way I wanted it to with the case. The uh, input output shield's been installed. Okay. It's a rainy day here in Texas, so static electricity really shouldn't be a problem. I figured out what was going on with the case and why it was shocking me. That case came from somewhere else, which means that it was dry on side and that static charge is probably already on it. I'm touching something metal right now while I touch the motherboard. It, sh it should be fine. Now, to install the CPU, I, I'm old, old style CPUs, the ones I've dealt with in the past, take a lot of force to put in place. I don't think this one's going to take a lot. You push that up, lift that up, and it's ready for the CPU. I think this is a CPU color. Install processor first, then remove and keep this cover. Okay, 
So it's opened and ready for me to put the CPU in. This isn't going to be too bad. I've got the CPU in hand. Now, these things are notched, so they only go in one specific way. Okay? There are two notches. Wow, this thing is a lot heavier than you think. There are two notches in the upper corners on this side of the CPU. And when I look at the board, the CPU socket, there are two notches on either end of the CPU. This corner is has a cutout on it, and there's an arrow on this corner. So I'm pretty certain it sits in there like that. Okay? It's in there. And then it's we push that down underneath that. Okay. It says... Install processor first, then remove and keep this cover. Well place this cover while removing processor or returning motherboard. Okay, that's bad broken English. I'm sure Asus is not an English speaking native country. Okay, and if I look in the motherboard book here, it says you put the CPU in first. You close it. Yes. I leave this cover on. I close this. Wow. And I'm right. It does take a lot of force. I want to make sure that's sitting in correctly. It seems to be. The notches line up right. So this that cover does come off pretty easily. This goes down underneath there. And then I can remove the cover. Okay. And that is being held in place. I got a little spit on it, and I don't think I should do that. Well, the CPU is installed. This comes right out when you've got that CPU in there. I'm going to put that back over the top of it right now, anyhow, because I don't really want this. Well, it won't fit because the CPU's pushed it up out of place. See, there's the trick to it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there because I don't really want dirt or anything getting on that CPU. CPU is installed. Up next, I'm going to put the power supply in the case. Good thing about that power supply, it only has one cable coming out of the back of it, so it's not going to be an issue. And I really want to peel the plastic off this thing. And I haven't done it yet. I really want to. Really, really want to. Look at me not behaving myself. Just not behaving myself. Here it goes. See, it's not scratched up. It's still pretty. We got the protective film off of it, and I hope there is no more other protective films hiding somewhere in here on me. Okay, I'm going to set that aside where I can't get really bothered much. Get that power supply in the case. Then up next, this gets mounted in the case. So, I'll be back in a few minutes.